There are few feelings better in Tears of the Kingdom than... Reactor online. Sensors online. Weapons online. All systems nominal. Oh, I'm ready to go. And you too can get 9 to 10 extra battery segments in less than an hour with, well, the following method journey adventure that I will guide you through. Because in the deep dark depths, there is a select few locations. Locations, the large abandoned mines and in each of those locations There is very specific things you can do what loot you can acquire secrets You can uncover that result in massive amounts of Crystallized charge very quickly on top of loads of po hell even rupees food useful items And not to mention a whole load of schema blueprints of which quite a few of them are actually ridiculous Ridiculously useful to have in your back pocket to whip out with auto build or at least when you use them better than I do <laughs> Oh no so what's the best, fastest, and easiest way to get to all these great mines and plunder their booty? Well, I be telling ye. First and foremost, you want to unlock and grab auto build if you haven't, and in doing so, you will get to your first mine, the Great Abandoned Mine. If you've somehow not done this yet, you want to go down the depths hole that's on the Great Plateau, do a quick bit of traveling in the dark, and you will arrive, activate the panel, and you'll be gifted Auto build. As we know, this lets you save your uh, builds and recreate them from pure zonite out of thin air, or just automatically put them together if the parts are already in front of you. Incredibly useful. This then will also start a quest that we care very much about, and that is to do with the Yiga clan and its majestic, glorious leader, Master Koga. <laughs> You auto build uh, the uh, little vehicle next to where you got auto build. You will activate all of this and start your first boss fight with Master Koga. You want to beat him, which is easily enough done. You just shoot him off the car and then whack him on the ground and repeat ad infinitum. And you will be gifted your first of many that we'll be getting today. Huge crystallized charge, which is worth a whole battery segment by itself. So we are going to complete this quest as it will take us around a good handful of the mines that we're after visiting anyway with added rewards. So next up we want to go to the mine beneath the Gerudo Desert and you can do that fairly easily from the Skyview Tower that governs that area, head up and then south there is the entrance that we are after. Once we get down here grab the close light route And I would recommend that you recreate this vehicle here. I have a whole video on why it is just the best optimum way to travel in the game, but that will let you get around very, very easily. You don't take fall damage when you're in out of charge as long as you stay on the steering stick and it's all around just glorious. You want to follow the path that I do and you will eventually arrive at the mine in question. The abandoned Gerudo mine. Grab the nearby light route so that you can, you know, see and also have a teleport back here. <laughs> Thank <laughs> you. 
and you will see Mr. Koga fiddling with that which he shouldn't. Interrupt him and you'll have a second little boss fight. Honestly, all of these boss fights are just more fun gimmicky nurse to show off what you can do with Zonite devices more than anything actually challenging. In this case, you just want to shoot him again off the flying machine and beat him up when he's on the ground. If he shields up, I found bombs work a treat. And then in his defeat, he will leave you once more a huge crystallized charge. But that is not all. Also, now at each of these abandoned mines, you can talk to a construct that will give you a schematic, a schema stone. This will give you a nice new device to add to your collection, and as I said, some of them are very good. But beyond that, every single time you get one of these, you get the parts to immediately build it, which you want to do because it's set up in a way that if you do, it will immediately lead you to a chest filled with some more crystallized charge. Sadly, not the huge variety, but the large one, and this is worth 20, so obviously five of these and another battery section is ours. On top of how much charge this will just get you, you are going to end up with a huge amount of the depths explored, lit up, and teleportable to, so it gives you a great base to actually explore from later in the game. In any case then, before we move on chasing Koga to his new location, we want to hit up another abandoned mine that's still in the Gerudo Desert Depths. Head northeast of the current mine and you will arrive there very, very shortly. And when you do, you will be greeted with some more rewards to get and, of course, a new Schema Stone. The first reward being the Miner's Mask in the chest in the center, which makes you a permanent light source, which is obviously very useful. And then uh, the scaffolding pop-up that we can use to uh, then swim up twice in order to get to our next uh, large crystallized chest. And as I said, there is huge amounts of Poe around all of these places, including plenty of Grand Poe too, which is obviously very useful to have. Now we are ready to chase down Master Koga and his next location, is the abandoned Lenariu mine. And in order to get here, it's a little bit finickier. We want to be entering the depths through uh, the entrance in the wetlands just north of the John Sao Shrine, so head there and head down. Grab the initial light route, and right next to here is a big circular platform that will be a rematch of a major boss, which will reward you another huge crystallized charge, but if you've not defeated that boss yet, he won't be there, but if he is, well, enjoy some more bonus battery. Past that then, simply trace my steps, follow along with me as we go light route to light route before we can eventually turn right and end up in the mine. <laughs> This is one I found before Master Koga actually went there, so I initially already grabbed the uh, Schema Stone and the large crystallized charge that you can get from a chest just across the little bit of water filled with Octo Rocks. But when Master Koga is here at that stage of the quest, once again, we have a little chat to him. He'll be very totally surprised, and he will begin the boat battle section of this escapade. This one's a little bit more involved. There is pre-done boats that you can hop on 
to catch up to him, basically ram into his boat, jump on it, and just start beating him up. And then you can then use his boat to get his next boat, and that just continues throughout the fight. Watch the arrows from his two helpers, and return fire as needed. It really is very much straightforward. Now he will go to the final mine he will be at, and we do want to immediately follow him. This is the abandoned Hebra mine underneath the Rito village at the top left of the map. You access this from this point right here. You will see someone by a fire who's also looking for the way in, fly off and glide into the hole in the side of the cliff to get our depths entrance, and this just leads you straight to a light route and the mine, as this is the climactic finale to this storyline. Once more, you will do battle with Master Koga, but this time he is in his masterpiece mech, which, again, is still resoundly defeated by just shooting him in the face while he's on it and beating him up. Once he reaches 50% health, he will box shield him in the cockpit and you can no longer shoot him, but what you can do is wait for him to summon the three mines that will float towards you. If it's the left and right mine, simply shoot it, but the mine that's above his head, if you rewind it through time, you will explode it upon him, knocking him out, and then you can finish him off. This will complete this storyline and give you both a diamond and yes you guessed it another huge crystallized charge which is delicious that's four whole sections of battery just for following this through and then yes once again there is a few extra goodies to be claimed at this mine a schema stone which will give you a rocket platform and of course another shop to buy more crystallized charge and energy cells from which you want to be activating at each of these mines use your new schematic to to rock it up into the air, glide over to the chest you will now see to grab yourself some more large crystallized charge. All right, that's the Koga side of things done, but there is still many more mines to visit, namely five of them. For the next two, we want to be heading to the Wetlands Skyview Tower and straight down into the depths entrance just above it. Very quick and easy. Grab, of course, the immediate light routes that you will see as you glide down to the ground and then we want to head directly east. If you've not already, pop in your menu and lock your minimap to always having north facing north, and it'll make navigating in the depths so, so much easier. So, head said straight east, either on foot or using your vehicle, and then you will eventually bump into the light route that is next to our target. the abandoned Hatano Mine. Here, once again, you will be given a schema stone and once again, a shop to unlock. And once again, if you immediately use the uh, schema stone you've been given to build the long, long bridge, yeah. you can not only get the Grand Poe, but then you can continue onwards for another chest with a large crystallized charge in. Excellent. And then head into the Yiga sort of camp barracks room for another chest with another large crystallized charge in. Then we want to be heading from here southwest to the next mine. Oh, and at a few of these mines, it should be noticed there will be remnant Yiga clan members that you can talk to or will have to talk to that will then ambush you, which is fine because killing them rewards mighty bananas and rupees and good Yiga clan weaponry, which is another nice bonus of doing this post the master storyline in the other mines. Now on the way you will go through two smaller mines, the first of which is the Ebon Canyon mine. This is lovely as there is a chest in the center of it with another large crystallized charge, so you will want to grab that as we travel. You can also stop here and mine the vast amounts of zonite that are here, the big ones embedded into the cliffside and the little ones strewn about too. Then continue on in the same direction and we will pass through the Dursal Canyon Mine. <laughs> Oh! <laughs> 
once again, there is a large crystallized chest here in the center, a light route next to it, and loads more zonite to mine if you want to. We then carry on in the same direction, get the Mimufis light route, which overlooks the next abandoned mine, the Lurelin mine. <laughs> Here, once again, we can get a new shop unlocked and a schema stone that if we then immediately use, we can get to the next large zonite chest. And once again, in the Yiga clan room, there is another large crystallized charge chest. So that is really lovely. That leaves three great abandoned mines to tackle. Next up then, we will handle the abandoned Kakariko mine. This one is fairly easy to get to because it is almost directly underneath the depths entrance in Kakariko Village. So head to Kakariko Village, head to this depths entrance, get the light route underneath you, say hi to the dragon if you got lucky timing like I did, and well, right there is the mine. And you might be thinking I'm broken recording at this point, but damn it, I'll keep doing it. There is two more large crystallized charge chest to grab along with the schema stone and the charge shop to unlock and this one is quite good here then we get the schema stone for the big bouncer as i like to call it which will again lead you to a large crystallized chest and there is again a second one in the yiga clan building on the ground next up then let's tackle the tarry town abandoned mine our second to last endeavor this one is kind of annoying to get to, but of course, like all the others, it is very worth it for the rewards. The Ulri Mountain Skyview Tower is our starting point, and we want to head into the massive depths entrance right next to it. Fly down into there, grab the immediate light route, and then we want to start heading, generally speaking, southeast. As we do so, we will come across yet another light route, of course, in the far distance. Now, this one will have actually overshot us a little bit, but it's important we get it because it is the light route associated with the mine that we're going to. Once we have that, we want to head back north a little bit, looking for a little tunnel on your left that will lead you to the Terry Abandoned Mine. <laughs> Once we make the way through the tunnel, ideally in a much less mess of a manner than I managed to pull off, you will find yourself drowning in Poe, another shop to unlock, and another schema stone to get given. This one is supposed to be a mining device that I blew myself up with, but get through the rocks however you can, and you will get to a large crystallized charge chest. Sadly, only the one here. Finally then, the most awkward one, and the kind of most dangerous one, because if you you go here unprepared, well, you might burn to death just a little bit kinder. So step one, if you want to get this final abandoned mine, which does only have one large crystallized charge in, but it is in an area filled with chests with other goodies, so depends how you're feeling, you want to go to Goron City and buy two out of three pieces of the flame resistance armor set, so you no longer set on fire when you come down here beneath the volcano. Then you want to, again, follow my steps.
will once again overshoot the actual light route we want, but it's worth grabbing and then we turn around and the actual one is above us on a jutting out cliff portion that is kind of missable. I had a little bit of an awkward time getting to it. From that, it's fairly easy to fly down, loop round, and end up in the abandoned Eldin mine, which once again, we get ourselves a schema stone, which is a on-demand automated robot buddy that is quite effective, and you're supposed to use it to clear out the enemies here, but I kind of sort of didn't, but they are guarding the one chest with what we're after. Now, throughout all of this, of course, you'll be killing stuff and mining stuff and finding stuff, so trade in all of your large zonite for more crystal crystallized charge if you have it, and then we want to head to the refinery. Now our epic journey is complete. The refinery just north of Lookout Landing, here if you've not been before, and we trade in 100 per battery. For me, I had 9 after this trip to get. It took me about an hour to do, and that was with kind of fumbling about in the dark literally a lot of the time. I'm sure you guys will be able to do it much quicker with, well, now the direction that I hopefully have given you, and then seeing all that battery up is absolutely delicious, and I think this is very much worth doing as a starting point before you do the usual farming methods of getting the battery up, like mining large zonite, like killing bosses for charge, like uh, doing all the little activities that are in the depths that reset once a blood moon to get you more crystallized charge, or at least the materials to get more crystallized charge with. In any case then, I hope you have found that useful. This was quite the in-depth one, but I definitely think it is <laughs> in depth one, depths, depths. <laughs> Uh, but I definitely think it's very worthwhile and quite the good way to kickstart both your battery and your depth journey. For now then, like if you enjoyed this, subscribe and hit the bell for more. Consider supporting the future of the channel on Patreon down below. And until we meet again, a good bye. Josh, Cotton, and Hollow with the videos. Dropping the humor like a hammer on your tippy toes. Bringing entertainment on a daily arrangement to take our insanity and turn it into entertainment. Yes, I said entertainment twice. To reiterate that it is nice To look into your faces on a mostly daily basis When you let us in your homes to make the whole world a stage Is, uh, goodbye